Hernandez, Janice Hernandez, and Julissa Hernandez. That's right, three different young ladies from different schools. Amber Hernandez is from Panorama High School. Janice is from Chatsworth, and Julissa is from San Fernando. Strike one. And Gulo still out there pitching. Pounding the strike zone. That one's outside. A little bit of a break to that one. Tried to spin it and had a little curve. I don't know if I've ever seen three identical last names back to back in the order that aren't related. Swing and a miss and some juice behind that one from Angulo. Amber Hernandez. All-star athlete from Birmingham. From Panorama lines that one right to Diamond Lewis. Hit it crisply, but Diamond Lewis made a nice play. Diamond Lewis looks good, hitting and defensively. Here's Janice Hernandez from Chatsworth. All right, Coach, you coach Janice. Tell us about her. Oh, Janice is uh, loaded with talent. She hits from the left side. She's got a, a good pop in her bat and really fast. So we'll have to see. If she gets on base, you can watch, uh, watch some things happen. There's a strike. Cal State Monterey Bay is where she's going to play. Do you like that choice for her? Yeah, uh, she, that'll, she'll be challenged. It'll be, definitely be a challenge for her. Um, she's going to a big school, and, and it's going to be a, a, a good challenge. She'll have to figure out how to adapt to being uh, um, in the middle of the pack instead of one of the top, top players on the team. She says she, she's funny. Is she? She's a funny girl? Oh, she's funny. There, uh, there's a lot of people that laugh at, at Janice. There's, she's, she's a good team leader. Why is she uh, hysterical? Um, just her outlook. She's, uh, she's got a take, she's got a perspective, and she's not afraid to share it. Well, that's a pretty good breakdown on Janice Hernandez. Down on the count, one and two. Bottom of the second inning, three nothing. The city on defense leading. And Janice Hernandez has struck out. That'll bring up Julissa Hernandez from San Fernando. Out of San Fernando High School, Julissa Hernandez. Started playing at 10, and she too says she's funny. So I don't know who's the funniest Hernandez in the dugout. Julissa Hernandez hit 417 this year for the Tigers. And seven homers, and she took that home run cut and missed. She was the MVP of the Tigers, most valuable player for San Fernando. First team all league. Change misses. One ball, one strike. Two out. Bottom of the second inning here, a 3 0 lead for the city. Line drive, right to third base. Houston Yano feels that position well. Inning is over. One, two, three, six straight outs recorded by Carmen Angulo. And after two, it's 3 0 for the city.
The left-hander out of Chatsworth. We just saw her hit Janice Hernandez. Will pitch. Working with her battery made in this third inning, Leslie Ariola. Her regular catcher during the regular season, Lindsay Lowe, caught the first two innings, but it would be Ariola working with Hernandez. And D.J. Jimmy, who had a sacrifice fly in an RBI on the first bats for the second time. Top of the third inning. City with a 3 nothing lead, a run in the first, two more tacked on in the second. Tenth City Division I All-Star game. D.J. Jimmy of Lincoln. Curveball breaks in for ball one. Her main position as a former Tiger with the catching position. Jimmy going to Cal State East Bay for softball. She describes herself as a very dedicated athlete. That one's high and inside, 2-0. 3.8, she's decided to go to Cal State East Bay. And she will continue her softball career. The wind's starting to kick up a little bit here at Husky Field, campus of East L.A. College. When we came on the air for our first game, the wind was out toward right. Now the breeze toward left, and it's probably about 8 or 9 miles an hour, maybe even 10 miles an hour. So if you... You hit it in the air to left field, you can poke it out of here. There's ball four, and Jimmy is aboard for the city division. On Elise De La Roca. Nine home runs this year. She's going to play at New Mexico State. Love the campus in Las Cruces. And that Aggie program has had some good years. And... Annalise De La Roca will fit right in. She was fabulous pitching. She's 28 and 2 as a pitcher, but again, nine home runs as a hitter and hit 609, and she looks at a strike. Had the opportunity to watch her play this year at Fremont High, and in the game I saw her, she hit two home runs. It's the only time she ever did it in her career. Rolled the third, and this time they're going to get Della Roca. In fact, they've been able to retire her twice. Yeah, Janice, uh, Janice is keeping the ball down where it needs to be. Again, it'll work with most most uh, hitters as long as you keep that ball down and, and hit your spot in and out, and that's what Janice is doing. Andrea Klein out of San Pedro popped up to end the first inning. Mentioned it earlier, the Division I Softball Player of the Year. Andrea Klein said it was her personal goal to put San Pedro softball back on the map. After all those championships, there was a little bit of a lull, and they finally got their 17th this year. Back through the middle, and a base hit for Klein. Runners at first and third. Yeah, uh, Janice Hernandez is doing a great job out there. The uh, it's, it's hard to believe that she's never pitched a high school game before this year, and uh, she just stepped up because we didn't have another pitcher, and she just did fantastic for us. We being Chatsworth. Chatsworth. My, my well, you can say we. You are the coach. <laughs> Here's Fua, Gabby Fua. That one's high, ball one. And again, Fua, who will play for Cal State Bakersfield, a very talented player. She's one for one, single to center. Last inning. Hits it back through the middle again. And she has a hit and an RBI. Glancing off the glove of the shortstop and out into center field. Yeah, Lindsay Lowe had to go to her left to get that, uh, to try to get that ball. It kind of went off her glove and, and uh, it was a tough play. We're charitable. It'll be ruled a single. And Gulo will bat. 4 nothing the lead. Yeah, that's Amber Hernandez. Am Amber Hernandez is at shortstop. Yeah, they're moving him around out there. So a 4 nothing lead. There's a strike to Angulo. She was hit by a pitch in the second. So the city flexing their muscles, scoring in all three innings. One in the first, two in the second, and one so far here in the third. They're the visiting team. Of course, in our Division II game earlier today, the Valley prevailed 8-2. to 
Rip One, foul. Second team, both from 2015 and 2017. And Gulo not getting cheated at the plate. Carmen Angulo waiting. That's hit well to left field. Back, 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 off the wall. Angulo will plate one more. It's 5 nothing. Runners at second, third on a ringing double for Carmen Angulo. Yeah, that ball was well hit. Uh, it was about six feet from being over the fence, and she, she got all of it, and good clutch time for her. Ricky Houstoniano. Five nothing lead in the city. There's no mercy rule today, is there? They're gonna just let him go, I think. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, give him a chance. Uh, just put in a courtesy runner. It's Hill again who scored earlier as a pinch runner. Woods and Hill have been running. Grounder by third and out into left field. Good throw to the plate. But she scores. And it's six to nothing. So another hit. Houston Yato gets an RBI. And the city is having fun. The lead is seven. So two more come across. And Lauren Garcia bats. Ball one. This is tough for Janice Hernandez facing these hitters, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this is uh, uh, the, the way the Valley went with this, as far as senior pitchers. Most of the, the Valley's uh, better pitchers were underclassmen this year. 7-0. City leading. Lauren Garcia out of Harbor Teacher Prep. Hit hard to second. But that's an out on the play. Runner advances to third. So Houston Yano's at third waiting to be picked up. Randy Martinez, the center fielder in an RBA spot. Got caught looking in the second. Well, it's going to be, one would think, nearly impossible for the Valley to erase a 7 nothing lead against this pitching staff of the city. But you never know. They have good hitters in the Valley. But they're up against it now. Yeah, the, the, the city pitching staff is, is uh, about as dominant as you can get. It's, it, you know, these are the two the teams were in the championship and semifinals, quarterfinals. I mean, these are, these are quality pitchers that uh, have had great success all season long. One in the first, two in the second, four so far here in the third with Houston Yano waiting to be picked up at third. Two away. Good at bat so far for Brandy Martinez. Got that open stance. Ball in the dirt. They get a kick out of everybody yelling out, good eye. Well, the ball was two feet in front of the plate and bounced. I would think that she would be disciplined enough not to swing at that one. Yeah, that's age-old tradition, I guess, you know. 2-2 two -two pitch, another one that bounces. Three balls, two strikes, two out, four in, and a runner at third for the city. In a 7 nothing lead. High. That was just above the letters. And Martinez gets a walk. Diamond Lewis batting for the third time. Triple scored a run. Popped up the second time. Made a nice play defensively at shortstop. This is no diamond in the rough. This diamond can play. 2-0. and Love the name, too. I mean, just sounds like she's good, and she is. Diamond Lewis, Hamilton High School. 
And the Yankee looks at a strike. On the play, Martinez jogs into second, so there's runners at second and third. Well, the city's very aggressive. Yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not. They're not taking any chances here. Ground out ends the inning, but not before the city scores four and builds a seven nothing lead after three and a half in our All Star game. Well, you're leading 7 nothing. You're the city section ahead of the Valley. And you come on with Annalise De La Roca, who was 28-2 as your pitcher. That'll preserve a lead most of the time. Yeah, I believe uh, she had 357 strikeouts this year. Uh, I mean, uh, incredible. I think her four-year total is, is some crazy number also. Uh, over 800, 900 strikeouts. It's just, she's a phenomenal pitcher. Burns in the first one, strike one to Casey Hauser of Verdugo Hills. Hauser who will play for Pasadena City College. But she's up against it, going against a D1 player. Soft roller to second, one away. Yeah, it threw a change up, threw a change up to her and she was able to just stick her bat out on it, but it wasn't enough to get it through the hole, so. Jessica Jimenez from San Fernando. On her way to UCLA. Don't know that she'll play softball there, but uh, she is going to attend UCLA with a beautiful 4.2 junior GPA. De La Roca's pitch is high for ball one. It is not De La Roca. We've been told now it's Robledo that's pitching. So Robledo has come in to pitch. By the way, the players are not wearing numbers. Robledo's pitch is very good. She's from Narbonne. Jessica Robledo. Didn't really have much pitching numbers, but she hit 350. But she looks pretty good in this circle. Jessica Robledo. Well, we just gave a nice buildup to Annalise De La Roca, who will pitch. But it's Robledo for now. Boy, that Marine League is stacked. Yeah, they've got loads of pitchers. Uh, uh, it's just one after another. And like I said, we haven't even gotten to uh, uh, Annalise or uh, uh, Robles. Jimenez down one, two on the count. That one buzzed right by her. Had to get her chin out of there. That literally was chin music. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes to Jessica Jimenez. Bottom of the third in the city. All over the valley, 7-0. Robledo to the plate. Hits softly to second. Two away. Yeah, she went after a high pitch on that one. That was a, a very well-placed pitch, but it just you, you're not going to get any power on that. She went up to get it and uh, uh, hit it to second base, and it needed to, to land before it would be a difficult play. Lindsay Lowe from Chatsworth. Your pride and joy, John. I know you're very proud of her. I know she's going to go on to Emerson College, but you just love Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay's been a team leader, four-year varsity player for Chatsworth, and just you know pulled everything together this year. She had 123 plate appearances and did not strike out once. So just a fantastic bat control. She'll be tested against Robledo because that's buried in there for a strike. 
Robledo throws hard. Yeah, she's keeping it down, keeping it away, doing what she's going to have to do. That's what it's going to take. Uh, uh, with Lindsay, she's, that's probably her weakness is that down and outside pitch. Well, there you go. Your player just got a hit to right field, a base knock for Lindsay Lowe, the first hit of the game for the Valley. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. The girl knows how to put her bat on the ball, and she did. She went down and away on it and went with the pitch. She did a great job. That'll bring up Ariana Luna. Luna is from Cesar Chavez in the Valley in the San Fernando area. He's going to play at L.A. Mission. Very outgoing young lady, and she looks at a strike. And for the moment, you know, we thought it was De La Roca in the circle. Physically, the appearance is similar, and the way this girl is pitching Robledo, she kind of looks like De La Roca the way she delivers it. Yeah, she's bringing, and, and the speed's up. It's it's uh, very deceiving, and well done. Well done on the throwdown. <laughs> Two strikes at home plate. Ariana Luda. Robledo to the plate. High and it doesn't miss by much. And again, it's getting there in a hurry. So Luda is going to have to try to time these Robledo pitches that are coming in at breakneck speed. One two pitch with two away. Strike three looking. So Luna goes down, and after three, it remains the City 7. The Valley is scoreless. Go to the fourth inning with DJ Jimmy batting. Hauser. Hauser's in the circle for the Valley. We saw our bat, Casey Hauser from Verdugo Hills. And Jimmy looks at ball one. DJ Jimmy. DJ from Lincoln High School, a catcher by trade. And again, we mentioned it. She's on her way to Cal State East Bay for softball. Hauser to the plate. Ooh, that got her. So Jimmy's aboard the hard way. and She got plunked pretty good with that pitch. Looks like she's going to be okay. Be on Elise 
Della Roca to bat next. Now, Della Roca is batting for the third time already. She's 0 for 2. That was upstairs. I don't know how many times this year she was 0 for 2. With her batting average, she hit over 600. 6.09 to be exact with the nine homers and the 53 RBIs. I don't know if she's been 0 for 2 all year. Going to New Mexico State. Looks at a strike. It's Robledo who's batting. That's why the look-alike for De La Roca. And again, there's no uniforms, no identifications of the players, but this is Robledo who pitched, so she's in the batting order for Annalise De La Roca. One ball, two strikes. That's high. Jessica Robledo. So we've had a lot of changes. The Division II game, they all batted in order. They didn't make any changes. And it was a little bit easier for everyone to keep score of the game. In this D1 game, more shifting of the players. So it's more difficult to calculate where they're going to end up in each inning. Three and two to Robledo. That's high and away, and Robledo's aboard. Kenesha Woods will come up. Batting in Klein spot is Woods. Kenesha Woods, who hit over 500 this year for King Drew, played on a championship team. 545, five homers, 27 RBIs for Woods. And Woods tries to lay down a bunt and misses for strike one. We got a system now. We have the coaches yelling out of the dugout who's coming to the plate. It's really the only way to do it if they don't have a uniform number and they exchange roles in the batter's box. One strike to Woods. 7 nothing. a very quiet stadium right now. A swing and a miss. Woods was tardy. Hauser's our pitcher, Casey Hauser of Verdugo Hills. And the Valley looking for some good pitching here in the fourth. They've been touched up in all three of the first frames. One's in the dirt. Runner toward third, throws down there, but she's safe. Good slide. Runners move up to second and third. And the city's doing everything well. Yeah, that was a tough pitch in the dirt uh, and, had, and came across on the wrong side, but it was uh, a real tough challenge. The base runners did it right. One and two to Woods. Swing and a miss, and she struck out here at East L.A. First out of the inning. Brianna Hill, who's been used as a pinch runner, will bat. So Hill up to the plate. Obviously a young lady with terrific speed looking to bunt and it's foul. Well, when you hit from the left side and you can slap the ball and get out of that batter's box so quickly, you're always a threat to reach safely. Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on the infield because they've got to keep an eye on the runner at third and, uh, and, and still try to make sure this fast runner, you get, her, get a, a chance to get her out. Another shortened up. Bun attempt is a foul, two strikes. We got all the East LA coaches here looking out. It's all with a lot of smiles on their face. They're proud that this field is being used for the 10th annual softball all-star game presented by Stylin Construction in Chatsworth. Two strike pitch, swing and a miss. And another strikeout for Casey Hauser. She struck out the last two. Robust. Cindy Robles from San Pedro to the plate. Gifted pitcher. She's going to play JC softball at El Camino. Beautiful facilities there at 
El Camino College play a lot of the city championship sports there. Track and field, football, just a beautiful campus in Torrance. Two out. Remains 7 nothing. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Casey Hauser trying to restore order, pitching for the Valley. With runners at second and third, it's high, 2-0. Oh. So this is Cindy Robles. 19-game winner in the circle as a pitcher. Rolls that foul. Robles, the young lady at the plate, pitched a perfect game on May 4th against Narbonne. Had 11 shutouts and three no-hitters. Cindy Robles. But she's batting here. Two balls, one strike, two out. Runners at second and third. The City with a 7-0 lead looking to tack on. Three and one. Three years in succession, Robles All-City, obviously All-Marine League, and a city champion this year in her senior year. 3-1 pitch. Roll the shortstop. This should end the inning and does. Granadino doing a nice job at shortstop. So a quiet inning for the city. They got a couple on, but they didn't play them. So after three and a half, it's seven nothing. And when we come back, Cindy Robles of San Pedro's in this circle for the city. everyone today's broadcast is brought to you by styling construction in Chatsworth the home of John our able color analyst John Ferguson the head coach at Chatsworth High School of course styling construction they're on uh, Canoga Avenue for all your construction needs give them a call 818-407-1327 818-407-1327 proud sponsor of the softball all-star game today Cindy Robles, well, we just mentioned all her accolades when she batted, but three no-hitters. You know what you like about her when she pitched in the championship game and they won the city title over batting? She went out there with 102-degree temperature. She just wasn't going to be denied, even though she was under the weather. Yeah, that's a gutsy performance. You, you, when you don't feel uh, you don't have a lot of strength, you, you're tired, um, and still to go out there and do what you do best. I mean, uh, that's that's a sign of a true champion. Danina Martin of Cleveland High School in Reseda, Southeast Missouri State University is where she's headed. Boy, they're going all over the United States. We'll see what Martin can do to try to get the Valley going here in the fourth. They're way back, seven nothing. And they're looking at Cindy Robles. Not going to be easy. Martin hit 338 for the Cavaliers this year. And yes, Cleveland is the Cavaliers, just like the pro basketball team. Swing and a miss. When you think of Cleveland High, the first name I think of is Nick Young, great basketball player that plays for the Lakers out of Cleveland High and Reseda. But there's been others. And Martin rips it down the left field line. That's a fair ball. And extra bases for Danina. And she touches up Robles for a double. Yeah, Danina loves the low inside pitch, and that's exactly what she got. She just pulled it down the line, and, and uh, that was an outstanding. Squared it up well, did the job. 
giving the Valley a chance now with a runner at second. Jocelyn Melendez will bat. Started the day at second base out of John Marshall High School. So Melendez, who will go to San Francisco State University and be a Golden Gator, has uh, that wide stance, very open stance. And Robles misses with the first one. Some excitement here for the Valley with that leadoff double from Martin. And Danina Martin hit it well. Robles buries that one right down the middle. That was the fastball. She brought it. Martinez, all league, all four years. Hey, John Marshall. Another strike on the outside edge. That was the perfect pitch. Can't hit anything like that. One ball, two strikes. Robles looking for a punch out. Misses there, two and two. Alongside John Forguson, I'm Randy Rosenblum. Glad you're with us. As Stylin Construction brings you the 10th Division I Senior All-Star Softball Game. The City against the Valley. 2-2 pitch. We'll try it again. Impressed how these Valley hitters are battling Cindy Robles. Martin came up there and ripped a double to left, and Jocelyn Melendez is not being cheated either at the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Lifted high in the air. Right field, one away. First out recorded. Martin stays at second. The cat is up. Cat Moreno of Silmar. Moreno played first base for the Spartans this year. Headed to Cal State Northridge. Excellent student as well, over a 4.0. At the knees for a strike. A little bit of a drop to that, the drop ball. So the Valley trying to break through here against Robles and get on the board. Bottom of the fourth. City seven. Valley nothing. Swing and a miss. And Cindy Robles is playing some hard ball. Just here it is. I'm throwing it as fast as I can. Cat, can you catch up with it? And she couldn't there. Yeah, it's, it's evident that the, uh, the the city pitchers that uh, the majority of them went to the semifinals and a couple of them to the finals. Uh, you know, they haven't really lost a whole lot. Where the Valley teams, most of them have been out for two weeks, and you know, you're really not practicing at that time of the year. A ball and two strikes. Cat Moreno waiting. Runner at second, one away. Bottom of the fourth. A swing and a miss. And Robles has her first strike out of the game. Yeah, and they went up and away and, and, and fooled her. And it was a, a well pitched. And she's just rolling through right now. From Kennedy, Valerie Rivas bats. She's not sure where she's going to play college. Thinking about maybe going to JC and College of the Canyons. And perhaps Alabama State is in the mix as well. Late on that swing, the fastball was by her. And Robles starting to pick up some steam in the circle after she was touched up by the leadoff hitter, Danina Martin, for the double. In the air and very playable and straightaway center, and this is going to end the inning. And Robles, despite that double from Martin, gets out of it clean. No runs, the one hit. Martin left it second, and after four, it's 7-0 for the city.